today let's talk about thermal paste application method and does it really matter? This video is brought to you by my personal pocketbook. So if you'd like to help me out, like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon page so I can make more videos like this one. So I was under the impression that this debate was long laid to rest, but considering some of the comments I've been getting on my YouTube videos that are pertaining to thermal paste application, people saying, oh, you need to spread it, you need to do a line, you shouldn't do a dot, et cetera, et cetera. It's suggesting that that isn't the case. So I figured I'd go ahead and revisit it right here. I haven't done this before, but there are plenty of other videos about it. And I'm not expecting any surprises from this experiment, but we'll see. So my test methodology was much like what I did when I was testing different thermal pastes. I used my AMD Ryzen 3700X on the Aorus X570 motherboard. And uh, this time I decided to use my AMD Wraith cooler with the fan set to 100%. That's about 3000 RPM. And the reason why I did this instead of using my AIO was because, well, typically the Wraith was getting higher temperatures than the AIO. I did a video on that. So I was hoping that there would be more differences in the readings at least. That was what I, I hoped. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But anyways, I took the front side, top panels, everything off my case to have more or less an open uh, bench scenario. I ran the ADA 64's stability test for 20 minutes with the CPU, FPU, and cache boxes ticked. I repeated the test three times, making sure that the CPU was at the same temperature before starting each test. It was about 33 degrees at idle. And after testing, I took the average of the averages, which were taken from HW Info, CPU, CCD, one TDI reading, and my ambient temperatures were at about 22 degrees. I tried, I tried my best to make sure it was there, and uh, any variations in the ambient were within half a degree. So I think it was, it was quite, quite close. So after each set of testing, I checked the spread, but instead of like I did with my other testing where I re reapplied if the spread wasn't quite right, I wanted to make it more of like a real world scenario where I mean, if you put on your thermal paste, you don't know what the spread is like until you take it off. And at that point, you've ruined it. You can't just put it back on. So it's kind of like Schrodinger's thermal paste or something. I don't know. <laughs> Even on my crack and cooler, you'll look at the differences between the two. It's very clear that this might affect the way that it spreads. So we'll revisit that after we go through the results. So the different applications I decided to do was the dot or the P method, the rice grain method, the line, the X, the pentadot, the butter toast, and finally, just for fun, the tiny dot. So first up was the classic dot or P method. It came in at an average of 76.4 degrees Celsius. And you can look at the spread there. It's not quite up to par what I typically expect when I use my AIO. Next is the rice grain, and no surprise here, at 76.5 degrees Celsius with a similar spread after removing the cooler. Now the rice grains Big Brother, the line, came in to take the lead with a reading of 76.3 degrees Celsius. Turning things diagonally, we have the X or the cross with much more paste used than previous tests, clocking in at 76.1 degrees. So if you look at this one and, and actually take a look at what it looked like afterwards, this is the first one that had really good spread. But we'll, we'll talk about this a bit more in a bit. And right there, there's only a difference of 0.2 degrees. This is, we're talking very, very small differences. So not too dissimilar from that one was the Pentadot. I believe this is what AMD recommends to actually use on the Ryzen CPUs. And that's because their IHS is quite a bit bigger than what you'll see typically on older CPUs and Intel CPUs. So it makes sense that they would want to recommend that, but whether or not that's gonna make a difference or any real tangible difference, We'll see. So anyways, that one came in at 76 degrees on the dot. So at this point, we're only 0.5 difference from our highest temperature. And the last of these that we used in normal testing is the spread. And this is the one that seems to be becoming more popular, or at least something that I've seen a lot of people recommend or saying that you shouldn't use the dot method or whichever other method you should spread your CPU paste. So that one came in at 76 0.1 degrees. So from this testing, this is my testing, from what I can gather, it doesn't really matter which way you do this. It doesn't matter which way you apply it. We're having a difference of 0.5 degrees between 
all six of these testings, that's like, that's like nothing. So this is, this is the extremes, right? Because we're using Ada 64. This isn't just, you know, a gaming experience or even idle. This is going to be unnoticeable when you're playing games. You know, we're, we're talking about being in the 50s here. This is putting the CPU to its limits. And we're only seeing a difference of 0.5 degrees. That's within margin of error. You could say that it's not even working. Although, in this case, this is where I want to revisit the AMD base plate, is the fact that those grooves are actually causing the spread to malfunction in a way, to not happen as the way you typically would see. So let's compare the way that the AMD cooler is spreading versus what my AIO would look like. The AMD cooler, you can see it's not quite reaching the entire IHS. And what that means is there's small amounts of the IHS that aren't being covered that would typically be covered by a smooth base plate, again, like on my AIO. So this is obviously not a huge deal because where you really want the thermal paste is in the middle, mostly in the middle. And obviously it's gonna make a difference if you have better contact on the entire IHS. But from my testing here, it seems pretty clear that it's not a huge deal. So if you're someone who's using a Wraith Prism, it seems pretty obvious. Just don't use the dot, the line, or the grain method. Use the X, use the spread, use the pentadot, use whatever you need to do to get good coverage. So for fun, one last test I did was a tiny dot. It was much like the dot of the P method, but just a very small amount of paste. And this is the first time we actually saw a difference from the other ones, reaching in at 80.3 degrees Celsius. And finally, finally a difference. Imagine if it was the same. Imagine there wasn't a difference. It was still like 76.5 or something like that. And you'd be like, do we even need thermal paste? At that point, I would probably just like not put any thermal paste on and test it and see what happens. So let's take a look here at the actual coverage that the tiny dot did. You can look at the IHS and see that it's barely covered. And you look at the bottom of the AMD cooler and you can see that again, barely anything on there. In comparison to other ones, especially the spread, this one had the most, right? You can see the thermal paste spilling out of those grooves. And obviously on the IHS, this has been seen time and time again, after each test, those grooves are pushing that thermal paste out the sides, which isn't great. I'm wondering why it turned out like that. Why they don't have like a smooth base plate? It seems kind of odd. Maybe there's a reason for it. I, I doubt it, but there could be. I don't know. But I, I, I just have to quote somebody here. I was reading in a forum recently and this guy replied, his name was Super Dave. And he said, I suspect the line between correct and incorrect application of thermal paste tends to be closer to the presence or absence of the paste at all, rather than some variation of application technique. And he's absolutely right. In my testing and what other people have tested that I've seen, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just put some thermal paste on there. Make sure it's enough. Don't put too little and it'll be fine. All right. So that is it for today, guys. I hope you liked the video and I hope this has kind of helped you realize that it doesn't really matter how you put the thermal paste on there. Just put enough on and it'll be great. This has been Tech Illiterate. My name is Nick. Thank you for watching.